Hi everyone, it's Krista Marshall. So I am Cindy's daughter. Surprise, I'm your substitute teacher today. Cindy is in the middle of the airport. She calls me today. She says, oh my gosh, I have no Wi-Fi. I can't do the live. It is crazy, there's noise. Like, can you step in? And little did I know that this weekend was literally going to be every single thing that this message really tested me on in real life, okay? So just like the Holy Spirit, you're not gonna teach on something that you're not living and that you're not experiencing and that you're not having to go through personally. This message is literally for you. If you've had a rough weekend, if you've had to really exercise patience, if you've really had to exercise controlled words, love under pressure, long suffering, patience, all of those things. This is the message for you. So this whole month is a new month, new year, 2022, new goals. People are hitting the gym. People are doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. So we are hitting the ground running, trying to really make sure that 2022 starts off strong starts off well and for those that don't know anything about me i'm a homeschool mom of three i'm a multiple business owner work from home so if anybody knows about being overwhelmed uh living in, uh, you know trying to live a patient life trying to be uh, jesus to my kids to my husband to my family really making sure our priorities in the right box i'm telling you the holy spirit is my lifeline every single day and this weekend was trying, guys. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> Can I tell you, my husband was in one room quarantine. I was sleeping on the couch all weekend. Kids were fighting. They were at each other's throats. And I'm like, Lord, give me patience. Give me the right words. Let me say things seasoned with salt, filled with grace. <laughs> like This is like what I'm meditating because this is real life. This morning, my 11-year-old, is at the table, she comes She comes in grumpy, sits down, good morning, you know, I already know, today's not gonna start off good on a Monday morning, strong, if my 11 year old comes to the table, why you gotta be in my room last night, Kayla, my other, my eight year old, you know, what is this, you know, uh, what kind of cereal is this, blah, blah, blah. like already complaining, already starting off the day rough. I was like, all right, let's whip out the word, let's whip out the word, James three, we read about tongue, the, the power of words, the power of the tongue, the power of how our words need to be life-giving. They can control the destiny of your life. But I was not feeling it myself. I wanted to be like, what? <laughs> Guys, this is real life. Is this not real life? That the Holy Spirit had to literally just convict me like, listen, you've had a rough week a rough weekend, you know, husband's been out of commission, kids have been at each other, it's very easy for me to just snap into, well, guess who had to work this weekend? Guess who had to work hard this weekend for this food? You better be grateful. It's very easy for me to get in that mindset. <laughs> uh, for those that know my mother, she is a wonderful woman of God, but she tells it like it is, okay? Can I see, hear an amen in the chat that my mom tells it like it is? She does not put up with nothing, okay? So it's very easy for me to get into that like snapback mindset and, and, and not handle it as the Holy Spirit would handle it, as Jesus would handle it. And a catchphrase that we have in our house is, are you having the attitude of Christ Jesus? And it's really hard for kids to understand that sometimes. So I have to break it down like, hey, is this how Jesus would respond? You know. It's always a race to get to the front seat. I'm going to get uh, shotgun. I'm going to get to the front seat. We run to the front seat and they're pushing each other to get to the front seat and all this stuff or their favorite chair, or their, their favorite place at the table or their favorite cereal, me first or, um, you know, when it's dessert time and they're rushing to the freezer to grab the ice cream and I have to be constantly at them. Are we having the attitude of Christ Jesus where he literally laid down his life to become last place, to wash feet, to take off his outer garment, to put it around his waist, 
so that he can be a servant of all, that he can become nothing. And that, that was something that is on repeat in my house. Like, hey, the first will become last and the last will become first. Our words have power, Proverbs 16, 24. Words sweet as honeycomb, but evil words dry up the bones. So it is our words and our actions. I have to get on myself, my own personal reflection. It, it's so funny how when you raise kids, it's like they're mini mirrors to you. Like if they come in with an attitude and they come in speaking negativity, it's because they pick that up from you. You know, and I have to do a check in my spirit. Like, how did I come in the house today? How did I speak to my husband today? How did I come across that way? Because they're just reflecting what I am getting. And so if I'm getting on them, oh, you don't need to talk back to me. And that's not, that is automatically going to be on them. So I have to make sure that my spirit is strong, that I'm getting up, getting in the word, going to the gym, getting on the treadmill, whatever it takes to connect with the Father, so that when I come back to my house, which is my battleground, your battleground might be your workplace, your, your home, it might be your job, it might be wherever that you go and you already experience warfare and you already experience words that are spoken against you, already experience um, persecution or uh, people that just don't have patience and don't have God's spirit, that is your war, war zone. And you need to come prepared, armored up every single day. And that's something that I've been really convicted of this year is how am I coming to, how am I bringing God's presence into my home so my kids can see God's presence in me? Because I can bring them to church and I can share devotionals and I can play veggie tales till I'm blue in the face. But if they don't see God's spirit reflecting off of me and onto them through my words, my actions, how I treat my husband, how I talk to them, how I am exercising patience under pressure, how I am answering with grace, seasoned with salt, how I am, as the word says, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, this is convicting for me. Because as soon as my kids come in and they start bickering and they start fighting, already I know God's presence has not gone before me in this home. So every morning I try to get up, we pray as a family, or I'm doing my prayer walk, I am in the word, I am doing worship in the house, whatever it takes so that my kids are living and walking in God's presence daily. And then they're taking those things and they are bringing them to their friends. They are in the future bringing them to their spouse, bringing them to their future children, bringing them to the future generation. My decisions and my choices now are going to affect them. And so that is something that I have personally had to work on, not just this year, but ever since having kids 10 years ago, 11 years ago now, having to daily walk with God. Just like we talk about in our family, we do a lot of board games in our family. We do a lot of sitting down, talking through things. A lot of child psychology goes on in our house. Like how did they make you feel? Um, what was your process? What was your thought? Like what were your thoughts behind that word and action? Trying to build emotional intelligence, trying to build up communication, problem solving, critical thinking. So we do a lot of board games. And one of my favorite board games to play with my daughter is chess. And chess, I talked to her about how you need to think two, three moves ahead. You're not just putting your queen out there to get taken early on. You wanna protect your queen and you wanna be strategic. And so just like we talk about chess, I say, hey, our words need to be strategic. Our words and our actions need to be, hey, what's our long game? What is our ultimate destination? What is, what is our ultimate goal if it's, um, is it just the now or is it in the future? And so even just this morning, I was telling her how our words need to be strategic. Our words and our actions need to be as we were thinking through. Okay, well, if I went here, what's going to be the ramifications from that? If I go here, 
what is going to be the result of that? And having to step back and think through our words and actions like that. Daily giving, like literally like day to day, having just enough grace that is sufficient for me, just enough power of the Holy Spirit to get me through that grace, to get me through that day, that night, that feeding, that decision, that choice, that word. And, and recently, the Lord has convicted me that when my daughter was born 11 years ago, and I was going in a complete different direction. I was getting my master's degree in education, education. I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be a principal. And all of that went to a halt. When I had her, I, I decided to stay home full time and not do childcare because childcare is expensive. And I, I really wanted to be there, but I didn't realize the emotional toll and the spiritual toll and all the mental toll that that would take on my life. And so for the last 10, 11 years, I've had this, I've been harboring unforgiveness against my, especially my daughter, because she was the first one to kind of bring me out of that, halt my plans, stop my plans for my life. And she, she halted all. I mean, obviously it was a, you know, it was the greatest issues I ever made and I love her and but I didn't realize I was harboring unforgiveness and bitterness having a, like how I would react how I would snap back at her you know if she was ungrateful for something or I don't want to do this or I want to eat this and I would say something or think something like um, well I could go make more money doing something else you know or I could um, I don't know, I could be appreciated more in the corporate world than being at home with you. You know, something like that, that the Holy Spirit has been convicting me about. And so I have had to really watch my words because I know that now, since she's 11, we are at kind of the point of no return in the sense of at 12, they say that your spiritual context for how are you going to see the world through a worldview, through spiritual worldviews, through how are you gonna see God, how are you going to relate to the spiritual is, is semi-cemented at 12. And so I have to be very careful that I am walking with patience, that I'm, I am open with her, hugging her, that when she wants to snap back at me or talk to me, that instead of me getting defensive and attacking through my words, I step back, give her a hug, and say, I love you, period. In our house, it's I love you, period, with a T, period. And I'm here for you. Nothing that you can do that will separate you from our family. And when I see her sass, he, is, he has taught me to hug her, affirm her. Even though my, my flesh wants to be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but my spirit needs to be so in tune to what is happening in the spiritual. What if we changed our mindset and instead thought, why don't we make lifestyle habits that are little small changes over time? Not just with health and wellness, even though it's important to drink water and to not have fast food, whatever. But what if we did lifestyle changes when it came to talking to others, our words, our actions, our acts of love, our choices, and that all comes from walking with the Father. That all comes from daily getting with Him, getting the plan of action, getting the, the strategy and saying, okay God, I'm here. What do I need to die to today? What do I need to say today? What do you want me to give up today? What do you want me to step back and say, you know, it's not my turn today. I'm gonna let somebody else take this one. These are all things that not, not just me needs to work on, but in general, people that claim the, the name of Jesus need to get better at. We need to get better at being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, walking in love, 
treating other people as Jesus would treat us. We don't have to defend Jesus or his word. His word has stood the test of time. The Holy Spirit advocates for himself. Our job is to love. Our job is to make good choices. Our job is to watch our words. And our job is to be the first to forgive, to be the first to share, to be the first to love. John 13 talks about people will know that we are disciples by our love. You know, by how we treat each other, by how we sacrifice, by how we give up, by how we die daily to ourselves and pick up our cross. Most miracles that we, you know, expect and, and, and look for or, you know, those, you know, somebody was healed from cancer and I'm not, you know, God can do all of those things. And those are wonderful things. You know, uh, unexpected pregnancies, um, groceries on the door. All of those things are miracles. Don't get me wrong. But a miracle in and of itself could be you loving that coworker. Could be you complimenting your spouse every day, making them coffee, getting up early to serve them. Doing those dishes that have been in the sink. Sacrificing something that you want for someone else. That is also a miracle. That is also a miracle of your time, sacrifice, and walking as Jesus wants. It could be as simple as taking the time every morning, setting the alarm 30 minutes early just to do a prayer walk around your house, around your neighborhood, and just praying for your neighbors. That's a miracle. That is setting up and getting the soil ready for anything that the Holy Spirit wants you to do. Even though it's hard, even though you don't feel like doing it, I would say 90% of the Christian life, you're not feeling it. Like you're not like tears are bursting out, snot is coming out. Oh my God, the Holy Spirit was amazing. This is amazing. 90% of it is just doing the work, doing the walk, walking with God daily, asking the Holy Spirit what you're going to do, putting in the time, the sacrifice, and the effort. Just because you're not feeling it one day, just because you're not getting tears from, from some morning worship, doesn't mean that you're not experiencing the walk with God, that daily walk, that daily sacrifice, that daily work. I mean, everybody wants a beach body, but are you willing to go and do the sacrifice to not go to that party, to not go to that club, to not drink that, to not smoke that? to not have that special treat, to not treat yourself, to not stay up late, to not go out with those friends. That's, that's a life, those are lifestyle choices that not a lot of people wanna do. And it's hard. But the walk with the Lord is the same mentality. It's the same mentality as, okay, I gotta get up. I have to walk with him daily, daily sacrifice, die to myself, pick up my cross, See what the Holy Spirit wants me to do. See what he wants me to say. See where he wants me to go. And that is a very difficult choice to make. And in this new year, hopefully God is speaking to you about new choices and new lifestyle things that you can implement in your life, making small changes over time. Choosing to love first. Choosing to think the best first. Choosing to forgive first. Choosing to literally like compliment your spouse as soon as they wake up. Babe, you look amazing. Dude, you, you know you guys had a fight last night? You know, like you, this is not what you want to do, okay? This is not how you want to respond. You want to be like, he didn't, blah, 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 blah. Believe me, I know. I've been married for almost 15 years. It is work. It is work to get up. It is work to wash those dishes six times a day. It is work to clean your house. It is work to look, you know, to, to get your stuff together and get your, you know, self together, whatever. It's work to get in the gym. It's work to, st it is a lot of work. But the seeds that you plant through love, they will return the work that you put into it. It says, my word will not return to me void. So if you're planting love, 
if you're sowing giving, if you're sowing forgiveness, if you're sowing and being intentional, intentional, if you're sowing and being intentional about what you're doing, it will return. It will return the work that you put in. You will have a stronger marriage. You will have kids that follow the Lord. You will have a home of peace. You will have a home filled with God's spirit. You will have children that seek and love the Lord. If you are putting in that daily work of making sure that the Holy